PC a couple years back. Hello, everybody! <laughs> oh, shit! I have a box! Yay! And we're going to check and see if it's broken or not. Because instead of bringing the package to the door like they're supposed to, they just flipped it over the gate. Yep. It, I'm, I'm hoping it didn't break because I know it's in here. Or what's supposed to be in here. And it's a coffee mug. That's a thing. One of the things is a coffee mug. This is from Personalization Mall. <laughs> and I saw a thing pop up on Facebook and I thought, ooh, I like that. It was a, it was a coffee mug. And they come, I think, in two different sizes. And I got the bigger size. Oh, damn, that's heavy. Okay. <laughs> This must be the mug, because the other thing shouldn't be this heavy. But yeah, the thing about it is, I, I don't care who you are. U, uh, USPS, UPS, FedEx, any of the other people that do mailing and delivering packages. If you put a thing by the gate when you're not supposed to, you are a failure. Because, you know, someone could see that and steal it. If you throw it, you know... Basically, just throw it. It'll break, maybe. Luckily, this didn't. It, it yeah. had pretty good packaging. This is my big ass mug with my name all over it. Because when I bought a computer a couple years ago off Amazon, I knew they were not going to do that. I knew they were going to basically throw it by the gate and be like, "Yeah." And it was right during school hours too, so people were getting, <coughs> people were getting out of school. Anyone could have picked it up. Yep. And when I saw that was delivered, I ran as fast as I goddamn could. I'm like, yeah, I am getting this PC. I'm not wasting a couple hundred dollars on this just for someone to steal it. Not happening. So, and that's exactly what they did. They basically put it by the gate. Actually, in the, in the actual driveway, like, not across the gate. Like, not on our property, but, like, close to where we pick up the trash and drop it off. I'm That's like, where they left my bookcases at one time. Yeah, and I'm like... Left them out by the road. Yeah. Outside the fence. Exactly. That's what they did with my computer. And it, it, nobody was home when they dropped them off. Yeah. So here I am pulling in going, oh my god, I'm lucky nobody stole them. Yeah. <laughs> really wish they would get their act together when they're delivering things. Exactly. But anyway, this is my mug. It's got my name all over it. Nice big... What size is it? I don't remember. Thirty ounce mug. Because you know, if I'm going to bother making a cup of tea, I want a cup of tea. Yeah. Notice I didn't say coffee. I don't drink coffee. Yeah. <laughs> That's not for me. But I will drink tea, and I like to make a big mug of tea. And I got this so that I could um, take it to work. And since I'm the only Amy that works in that particular location, yeah. I think they can figure out whose it is. Okay, other box. Yeah. Much lighter. Yeah. <laughs> this one I can actually pick up without any trouble. But it, it's, um... When you see it, you're going to be like, yeah, that, that's appropriate. This is... Weird shit. Oh, that's all the filler that they put in. It's a, a clear tumbler, but it's got a bat, and I could customize it with my name. Huh. So, yeah. And it's got the, you know, reusable straw and the whole bit. So, I guess now i got to go do dishes again. Yeah. Dishes and laundry. I swear, that's all I get done. There it is. Super cute. It's kind of, it, you can feel it's kind of raised. All the little dots to match the letters. But I thought it was super cute. So that's, <laughs> that's that haul. <laughs> Personalization mall. This is Halloween character personalized 17 ounce. 
it could choose whether or not the bat has a bow. I obviously chose no bow because, I mean, really? Do bats wear bows? Not that I'm aware of. I'm not a bow person. <laughs> um, I could do my other packages that are out there and just do it as one big haul. Yeah, you want to go grab those real quick? The ones that are in the uh, yeah by the bed. I got some stuff from Macy's. Got super super good deals too. Um, there's a place called Brad's Deals, and they had comforters any size for 19.99, I believe it was. And then if you place an order. There was a blanket you could add on for ten ninety nine. So that's what we've got here. These are from Macy's, and of course, you know, if you ordered a certain amount, you got free shipping. And I ordered two comforter sets. I really put this one down. This is a king size comforter. It's a, a reversible comforter with two pillows. Cases or pillow shams, whatever pillow covers. There, that covers it all, right? <laughs> Let's get, get this open enough so you can see. So, one side is this red plaid, and the other side is like Christmas dogs. Do not cut. Cut here. Huh. And the other one, this one's a king size, the other one's a full size. I was wondering how they were able to fit two comforter sets in that one package. Because <laughs> they sucked all the air out. See, my bed, this bed is um, a king. I only use half of it, which is fine. <laughs> Somewhere in here, there we go. Okay, maybe it'll be easier to show you just with the pillowcases. So, one side is plaid. And the other side is all these cute little puppy dogs. Is that a chihuahua? Probably. And a... I don't know. It kind of looks like a Frenchie. Probably. Maybe a chow? Ah, fucking I don't care. Let the phone ring. Um, that looks like some sort of spaniel. Yeah, probably a cavalier. Boxer. I don't know, some kind of butt. <laughs> I wonder if that's like supposed to be a golden retriever or something. I don't know, it's decapitated. <laughs> they killed Chica. <laughs> that one's very beagly. Yeah, that's too well, alright. I can see by the smallness. That one, maybe a corgi? I don't know. They're cute. So I got two of the same. One for my room to go on the king and one for the bed that's in the middle of the living room for when my brother and his family come down. They use that room. Um, and we needed some more blankets. So I thought, you know, we'll get this cute comforter set. It's <clears throat> super cheap. Why not, you know? Because you figure the the king size was probably a hundred bucks to start with. I saved over a hundred and fifty dollars by ordering it through the Brad's deals thing. And then my fuzzy blankie, luxury micro mink slash sherpa throw. How do I get into it? You don't. <laughs> I 
So I thought, ooh, soft and fuzzy. Oh, that is so soft. That is so soft. Soft. Yeah. You're going to try to steal it from me. Yeah. When I find it missing, I will hunt you down and kick your butt. Yeah. Like a good mom. <laughs> yeah. So you got <coughs> the soft, fuzzy, faux mink side. And then you got the soft, fuzzy Sherpa side. And they, I think they said this was tie-dye color or something. I don't know. I don't know how tie-dye it looks. I liked it that it was kind of the, the gray and blue and white colors. Oh, man, this is so soft. I got a new favorite blankie. <laughs> so, yeah. <coughs> That's what I've been shopping lately. <laughs> Trying to get some things for the holidays straightened around. I have a book outlet haul on the way. I have a coat on the way. Of shipping, free shipping, and all that codes. Oh, this personalization mall advertising in my Macy's package. Oh, More promo codes. See, <laughs> fucking. Hey, y'all want a promo code? Why not? Um, twenty percent off your purchase of fifty dollars or more. Coupon code DNGR22TC or free shipping on your purchase of $35 or more. Coupon code BMGP42RW. In case you can't read that. Because, you know, not a great camera, crappy lighting, hard to read. So, I read it off for you. Um, if I th remember, I will try to put it in the description box. But that's for Personalization Mall, which is where I got the mug and the uh, bat cup. Um, what do we got here? Okay, this is 1-800-Flowers.com. Flowers and gifts to celebrate a season of togetherness. Uh, $10 off $39.99 or more. Promo code SPIRIT. Order at 1-800-Flowers.com slash SPIRIT. Or they have an 800 number. <coughs> no, these weren't in the Macy package. They were in the Personalization Mall package. Duh! I forgot that you had that box sitting there. <laughs> Yeah, um, as you can tell, I don't get much sleep. So, there's a couple promo codes for you if you're interested. Um, I don't think there was anything in the uh, Macy packages. Who knows? They don't even put packing slips and things anymore. Yeah. Have you noticed that? They don't put packing slips in there anymore. And they're basically destroying and ruining a lot of good shit. Like, back in my day, we used to have... A good old manual. We used to have everything. But now, in video games, yeah, there yeah, are no yeah, manuals. Yeah, yeah. Who thinks of the idea to get rid of manuals? What if you're just taking a shit and you gotta read? You gotta read the manual to find out whether or not you gotta take that shit. So, that's a video game for you. Using the bathroom. Here, here kitty kitty. <laughs> Y'all needed to hear that rant, right? <laughs> Is there anything in this package? It came in two separate packages, so maybe they put... See here? So you can see I didn't lie. Here's a second. <laughs> Alright, so... I think that's it. I'll try to remember to put these codes down. Um, but yeah, I've got a book outlet haul coming. Which is mostly Christmas presents. A couple, couple more to add to my paper-bound classics collection. Um, which I can save till Christmas. I mean, you know, whatever. Uh, I, bu I bought a new coat. Now, I tried ordering one through Walmart. And I thought it was super cute. And it really was. It was really a cute coat. And it almost worked. <laughs> it was this close to working um 
I ordered a 3X, which was the largest size that they had. But And it fit fine everywhere except the arms. The shoulders were real, real tight, and then the sleeves were kind of snug. And that was with wearing just a regular t-shirt like this one. Um, if I would have put on a sweatshirt or a sweater underneath it, I wouldn't be able to move at all. My arm, it was just too tight in the arms and shoulders. I do have broad shoulders, so I'm not faulting them. It's, it just wasn't compatible with my body. But it was super, super cute because it was one of those red buffalo check and it was, uh, had little toggles down the front and it had a little hood. I was like, oh, I love it. Didn't quite work. So, I mean, I, we got it. I tried it on. We were getting ready to go to Walmart anyway because we need to pick up some groceries. And they didn't have this in store, so I ordered it off the internet website thing. And I was like, well, guess I'm not keeping that. Shoved it back in the package and we took it straight back to Walmart. Um, while we were there, I tried on another one. It was a, like a black puffer jacket. Really cute. Same exact problem. So I think, I don't know if it was the same company that manufactured it or what, but yeah, the, the, it was just too snug in the sleeves. Everywhere else it felt perfect. And I was like, oh well, okay. So I ended up ordering one from a place that I'd ordered before. And I got a message today. Today is the uh, 7th, November 7th, saying that it was shipped on the 5th. When I checked yesterday, it said it hadn't been shipped yet. <laughs> and then I got two notifications today telling me it was shipped on the 5th. I don't know. So that's common. I got a couple things coming from Amazon that are like Christmas gifts. Had to order a new Kindle. Oh, um, grab the Kindle that's on that, not over there, over here. On the bin. Too many. The black Kindle. <sighs> See if you can get it to work. It got to where I pressed the button to turn it on, <sighs> and it wouldn't do anything. And I thought, <sighs> okay, whatever. So I pressed the button a little longer to, like, restart it. And all it does is bring up the Amazon logo. It won't go any farther than that. It won't continue booting. Alright, looks pretty good. It should be fine. I, but you gotta hold it forever to get it to do anything. And, and it doesn't get any farther than that. And I let it sit there for close to two hours the other day and it just would not. Which kind of pisses me off because I was in the middle of the game and now I'm going to have to restart from the very beginning. Yeah. <laughs> because when you re-download the game... It doesn't transfer your information. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm a little pissed at that. As I mean, I'm, I'm losing, like, 37 levels of... Yeah, and it's not like <laughs> on, like, Google, where basically with Google, you know, if, if you have one of those Samsung phones or Android, basically, you know, you download Google Play or whatever, sign in your account, download the game, and you delete it, and then go back to it, bam, it's already there. So you don't have to do all that. Or, basically, download the, the files to your Facebook. So, just sign into your Facebook if you want to delete the game and go back in. And you have the save data. But that that's not always I the best. I don't know if I signed in with Facebook at all on that game or not. So I mean, it may or may not have any save data. Yeah. But, I mean, Really? So now I gotta go back and re-download everything. Yeah. <coughs> Hoopla, and then re-download all the books. Overdrive, which they keep saying to change to Libby, but they don't have a Libby app for the Kindle. Yeah. But they're supposed to be getting rid of Overdrive and everything going to Libby. Oh, well, there's a way to do it. Except that when you click on the link, it doesn't take you there. I'm gonna have to take it to the guy at the library and say, Help! I can't figure out how to do this. But I'm going to have to re-download all the stuff I've got checked out that way. It's just a big hassle. Because this stupid thing just decided it wasn't going to play anymore. Yeah, by now it should have done something. And it, it's just... It, it just... That's all it does. Is show me the Amazon logo. Yeah. I kind of had a feeling it was coming, though, because it's been getting real laggy and, and slow. Yeah. 
But I don't know if there's a way to, like, reset it to default. I don't know, there probably is. Because I know a lot of devices have that. Oh yeah, your thing's not working. Well, here's how you factory reset this thing. Back to square one. Well, every device is different. You know, what works on a Samsung I don't have a memory card in there? I thought I had a memory card in there. Huh. Huh. I don't know. So, that's on its way. Should be here Friday. Yeah. Which means I'm making do with an old, beat-up one. <laughs> Hand me the pink one. This one? Yeah. <laughs> this one? Old school. <laughs> it looks, the fingerprints are ridiculous. Yeah, this little dinky one. Um, I mean, it's got the corners busted. The blue one... <laughs> Oh. Which is over there somewhere. The um, the, the corners busted where the uh, headphone jack is. This one it's the opposite corner, so it's not affecting anything. But there is a crack going down. That's oh, right underneath the Nintendo Switch. Yeah. We have so many tablets. I know. I've got. <laughs> Oh, you can see here, I, it's, that's the, uh, headphone jack. And you can see piece of the, uh, microchip in there. So this one's in really, probably the worst shape of all of them. I think this is my oldest of the ones I still have. But I'm making do with the pink one. I haven't tried plugging in the blue one to see and recharging it to see if it still works. It should, but... I mean, it says something when the case is breaking apart and it still works, but the one that's in near-perfect condition just quits. And I can't figure out why. Yeah, that's nice. Anyway, but I got a new Kindle on the way. So I can get back to attempting reading and things. The one thing I hate about tablets and phones these days, they don't make it to where you can just, like, take the back off and fuck with the internals. So you can be like, okay, so, maybe this needs a new battery. <coughs> maybe this needs this. Maybe it needs that. So if it basically breaks or it doesn't do what it's supposed to do, and I know that's probably why they do it, so you have to go and buy a new one. But, you know, you'd think more companies would be like, yeah, you know... We want you to have as long of a lifespan for these things as possible. So if something doesn't work... No, they don't. They want them to break so that you have to buy new ones. Yeah. That's the other day I showed you that I got a package, a, a prize package from an author. And I didn't realize that the books are signed. I don't think I even looked inside this one. The other book, uh, The Grave Digger? Is that what it's called? Up on the top... The shelf where the vampire is, the top of that stack, the grave digger, I think so it's called. Grab that book. It's a hardback. Um, I read the grave digger. Loved it. Haven't read this one yet. But they are signed. I didn't realize that at the time, so I wanted to be like, hey, look. It really is. <laughs> this one, the grave digger. Let me show you. I guess when I opened it, I saw the blank page, and then the page that was signed, I think, must have stuck because I didn't see when I looked. But, yeah, there's... This book is really, really good. I gave it four stars, and I, I'm debating whether to go higher. Um, it's set in 1875 Ohio in a town called Circleville, which is a real place. Um, they're famous for their pumpkin festival and for... The Circleville Letters, which, if you're into true crime, that's a whole other thing. Um, but it's about a 12-year-old boy named Cap Cooper. Cap is short for Captain. Um, and his dad is helping this guy dig up graves. And brings Cap along to help because he's small, he can get in the small spaces easier. 
So they're digging up these graves. <coughs> and Cap discovers that he has an ability to touch a dead person and bring them back to life. So it's kind of like Pushing Daisies, if anyone yeah. remembers that show. Yeah. I'm surprised you remember it. Yeah, it's, it's a good a long, show. It's, it's been a long time. Um, <laughs> yeah, it, it's something similar to that. Um, but he kind of discovers it on accident, and then he discovers that one of his school friends is one of the bodies they're digging up, and he he that she's the one that he accidentally brings back to life, and he then that sends him off on this whole other tangent. Apparently, when he was born, he died and was brought back to life, and he thinks that's why now he can bring people back. Yeah, probably. Um, real convoluted mystery going on in here because they're trying to figure out, or he's trying to figure out, who is wanting these bodies dug up. And suddenly, this new medical school opens up in town. So he figures that's where the bodies are going, right? So he breaks in and he doesn't find anything, but he gets caught and they kick him out, say, yeah, you're just in here looking for a thrill, you know, get out. <coughs> and he goes back in. And then, um, a lot of, a lot of events happen. And people who are involved in the whole grave digging resurrectionist conspiracy, um, it runs deep. There are people involved that you'd be like, really? But, uh, yeah, it was really good. It, it kept me interested. Um, the audiobook's only like five and a half hours, so it's it's a short read. It's a, a 212 pages-ish? 210, if you read the historical note, it's 212. So, short book, well worth the read. Um, I think older middle grade and younger young adults especially that seems to be the age it's written for definitely worth a read now on the other side of the coin <gasps> is this monstrosity oh, shit. I hated this book <laughs> and hate is not too strong a word I hate this book um, I gave it one star and that one star is because I like the side couple more than the main couple so we got Kat, Katarina, Katarina, it's not Katrina, Katarina I think, it, she runs Roth Chocolates or Roth Confectionery, and then there's Mark who runs Denim's. They used to be married, they've divorced, and Mark's cousin Fritz has managed to get a job at Roth with the idea of trying to put Kat and Mark back together. I loved Fritz. Fritz was, was probably my favorite character. Um, Kat has an assistant named Norma. Norma ends up kind of getting along well with Fritz. And I loved the Norma-Fritz combo. Fritz is in his, like, late 20s. Norma is, I think they said 48. So, yeah, you've got the age gap going on. Which is not a big deal. People make such a big deal out of it. If you are of age, if you are a legal adult, why is it a problem? Exactly. Um, <clears throat> you know, I, I guess I look at it differently because I grew up with parents that were 13 years apart. They were married for... Jeez. They didn't make it to 40 years because mom died before that. But they, they'd they still be married if they were both alive. Um, yeah. So, they, I mean, they were married... How old was I when mom died? Uh, 37? <coughs> Probably. So they were married 38 years? Something like that? So, it works. It can work. Age gap does not mean robbing the cradle. It doesn't mean grooming. It doesn't mean any of that crap. Sometimes you just 
find love with somebody who's, you know, a little older yeah. or a little younger. As long as you are both consenting legal adults, why does it matter, right? Exactly. So I hated the whole cat and Mark thing. Because, I mean, by like the second, third page, I was like, just bang already. Yeah. Just get it over with. Because I could see where it was going. It was a mess. Because Cat was so hot for Mark, but they're divorced, so they can't be together. Blah, blah, blah. <sighs> Bullshit! Okay. <laughs> yeah. Now, if you had, if you're divorced, and the only thing that you were compatible with with your ex was the sex, what's wrong with a little roll in the hay every so often? Yeah. You just, you, you couldn't work as a married couple, but obviously the chemistry was there for the sex part, so you don't have to be married to have sex. Exactly. I guess is where I'm coming from. If you're ultra-religious and all that, and, oh, it's a sin, fine, that's your belief. <laughs> They're not religious, okay? So, what's the big deal? Obviously they were having sex before they got married. Yeah. And both of them want to have sex now that they're not married. But Kat is being a complete bitch and does everything she can to hurt Mark. I could have dealt with Mark. He was all right. Not perfect, but, I mean, nobody's perfect. But Kat, every time she turned around, she'd say or do something that would hurt Mark's feelings. And he'd kept coming back for more. Which kind of lowered him, in my opinion, because... Yeah. No, you don't keep taking the abuse. You stand up for yourself. Anyway. There was that whole issue. Then there was the parents. And they were the ones putting Fritz up to the whole try to get him back together thing. So they connived all these different things. Oh, well, we're going to tell Kat that... Um, Roth confectionery is hurting so bad financially that we have to sell and we need to merge with denim. Um, and we want to do it with denim because we know them. They're friends as well as rivals. Blah, blah, blah. So they contrived this whole thing which didn't have to be a thing. I, I'd be pissed at my family if they pulled that kind of stunt, you know? So I didn't like that. The only thing at this point that was saving them was um, the whole Fritz and Norma thing. Because they, they were so funny together. And they were fun. And then Norma ruined it. Because they were on a date. Or, well, they hadn't gone out on, technically gone out on a date yet. But they were together and... Fritz kissed her and she was so so um, what's the word I want not intimidated I don't know she, she was just so uncomfortable with the whole idea of the age gap with her being an older woman that she said to him, you remind me of my grandson. Ooh. Her grandson is six years old. Oh, shit. So she's telling this hot guy that she really has the hots for, that she really wants to get together with, that he reminds her of a six-year-old? Uh, damn. no. <laughs> Wrong. You just ruined it. Because you're so fucking insecure. That's the word I was looking for. You're so fucking insecure about the age gap that you're not willing to let it happen. I was on the receiving end of one of those relationships. Um, I dated this guy and he was so insecure about the age gap between us because he was, I don't know, 15, 16 years older than me. I was really into it. I thought it was great. But he was all, yeah, but you're... You know, my, my kids are almost your age, and I don't know, and la 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 la. And he acted like he was embarrassed to be seen with me. 
So every time I said, hey, should we go get dinner or should we go out? You want to do something? Or if there's an event coming up and I'd be like, hey, you want to go do this? No, I have other things to do. And yet, I went to see, he used to work at a racetrack. I don't know if he still does or not. I haven't kept up with him. But I went to see him at this racetrack that he was working at one night or one afternoon. And he was so proud to have me there. I mean, he's strutting around like a peacock. Look, I got this girl, you know. But after that, anytime anything would have had where we would be seen in public, he had a reason why we couldn't go or why we, he didn't want to do it. Or he had to watch his granddaughters or blah, blah, blah. I invited him to my college graduation, okay? Oh, yeah, I'd love to go. Okay, great. And I gave him the dates and times and everything. And the weekend of, I said, so, you know, the, the thing starts at this time. He's like, what are you talking about? I said, graduation. You said you were going to come. Oh, I signed up to work an extra shift, blah, blah, blah. Oh, shit. Really? This was a big weekend for me. It was my birthday weekend. It was graduation. It was Mother's Day. You know, we, we were going to take him to dinner. So was, he didn't have to pay for anything. He, he would have gotten food because we were having a celebration. It, you know, that was part of the thing. No, he had, he just, he took an extra shift to work. And I then acted like he had no idea that that, that was that weekend. And I'm like, really? We've been talking about this for months. That's all I would talk about. I wouldn't shut up about it. So, yeah, I was on the receiving end of one of those relationships. That's when they don't work. But if you are both of age, if you're both legal adults, consenting adults, why is it a problem? You're choosing that person, that you want to be with that person. Exactly. So, that kind of... She stepped in it big time there. It would have gotten two stars if she wouldn't have done that bullshit. Oh, I do have a quote in here I liked. <laughs> <coughs> so, supposedly, oh, fuck. Roth was supposed to be having some sort of management retreat thing at the uh, corporate cabin. So, Kat drove up there, and she gets there. It's dark. And it says, visions of axe murderers dancing in her head. Cat rose from her car and looked around her. The cabin's one exterior light created shadows that striped the creekside lawn. The firs and pines, dark silhouettes against a purple sky, writhed gently in the breeze. I like that. That is a great visual. Yeah. Of course, you know, then Mark shows up uh -oh. because they contrived that Denim was going to have some sort of corporate retreat thing the same weekend at the executive cabin but the only two people that show up are Kat and Mark and they both have these pink or pink or purple I think maybe they were lavender I don't know these envelopes from a place called CLR and when they open their envelopes and see that it is from CLR stands for creating loving relationships oh, they yeah. realize that they've been duped and neither of them want to sleep in the downstairs bedroom because that's where they had their honeymoon and so yeah the memories of it blah 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 just bang already <laughs> it was ridiculous absolutely ridiculous and it was tedious I just I hated this book and I was reading some of the comments on Goodreads. All these people are giving it like four and five stars. And talking about how hot the sex was. And, you know, and I'm like, did you read the same book that I did? Because they didn't have sex until like page 214. And there's only 260 something pages. So 40 pages from the end is the first time they have sex in the book. Where were they getting all these hot sex scenes from? Yeah. I'd like to know. <laughs> because it wasn't the book I read. I don't even think that would have saved it. Because the little bit we got, there's a lot of fade to black. And I'm just like, you build it up all this time. 
Two hundred plus pages to fade to black. No. Do not read this. It's awful. It sucks. I'm gonna put it in the um, little free library. I wonder if I should put a note on there saying, this book sucks. <laughs> if you're looking for a good romance, this isn't it. Keep moving. Well, I'm going to stuff it in the uh, little free library because I sure don't want it. So, out of the two books that I have finished recently that I have available to talk about, read this one. Don't read this one. Pretty simple, right? Okay. I think that's all I have to talk about at the moment. Do you have anything? Anything else? Uh, Mew. I'm a cat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That sounds about right. <laughs> Alright, I think we're going to end it here because I've rattled on forever about stuff that y'all probably don't care about. And I'm hungry. And so, he's hungry. Subway. <laughs> and I, I have to uh, place the order so I can't do that while I'm recording. Blanket is falling. Um. <coughs> Remember to do all the YouTube -y things. Comment, like, share, subscribe, ring the bell icon to be notified of future uploads, maybe. And um, I guess we will see you in the next one. Bye.